So today we're looking at war and peace. Firstly, you can make an alliance with someone. A sovereign state could make an alliance with another sovereign state. And this simply means that they become um, allies, which is another word for it, which is obviously from alliance. And your allies are the people who are on your side. It's a treaty. It's a type of treaty, a type of contract where two nations agree to be on the same side. And the same for make a pact with a pact, a type of treaty, because a treaty really means an international contract between sovereign states. A pact is an agreement, it's normally non-aggression towards each other, and it's perhaps also the agreement to um, to act together if, you're, if there's any kind of attack on one of the states, the states have to act together. And um, this is again a type of treaty, which is perhaps why NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So they also have the word treaty in NATO. Now, you can also make a truce. The, a truce is a type of ceasefire, really. A truce is an agreement to stop fighting. The same for an armistice. It's an agreement to lay down your weapons and stop fighting. So a truce might last three days, it might last a week, but then it, it may the, the ceasefire may not be maintained and their um, hostilities or violence could break out once again. Um, so yeah, um, an armistice, a ceasefire and a truce are very similar. A peace treaty, perhaps it should be up here really, because this is a type of contract. And obviously it's a contract aimed at peace in some kind of way. Um, okay, um, if violence erupts, it breaks out very quickly. Really erupt is very similar to break out. And remember that other bad things can erupt, like hostilities, war, um, uh, all of these collocate, w these two uh, nouns collocate with all of these verbs, so please remember those are useful collocations. Um, to go on the offensive simply means that uh, uh, um, one of the two armies who are fighting, um, that if they go on the offensive, they stop defending and they start attacking. Um, okay, so perhaps you could also say they launch a counterattack. Perhaps the enemy is um, attacking and then you launch a counterattack. It means you fight back in some kind of way. You go on the offensive suddenly. You can also launch surgical strikes, which usually means air strikes. And I better put that here air strikes. Um, and the word surgical is used, to, it's kind of a euphemism, I suppose. Um, I don't know if you remember this word. It was in my vocabulary lesson on books and literature. Um, so euphemism, what I mean is uh, there's nothing, there's no surgery involved in airstrikes. They're very destructive processes, obviously. A lot of, there are a lot of casualties in an airstrike. But the word surgical is to try and show how precise the airstrikes are. It's supposed to give the impression perhaps that there are there is very little collateral damage what i mean here is that there are very f uh, there are very few casualties as well very few casualties um because if something is surgical it's only getting the enemy soldiers it's not hitting civilians in any kind of way and so this is a euphemism really i think most airstrikes are not as surgical as perhaps this word might make you believe and perhaps very often there's collateral damage which just means slaughtered civilians um, you can also launch a preemptive strike a preemptive anything means something you do in anticipation of another action so it's something you do to prevent another action so when you launch a preemptive strike you're hitting the opponent before he hits you that's the whole point you you're you're attacking them because you're absolutely certain that they're going to attack you and so you launch a preemptive strike to make sure that uh, they don't attack you in the first place Again, it's a kind of euphemism because this is, or it's, it's a way of justifying aggression because this is a way of justifying attacking your opponent first. You're not attacking him first, actually. You're attacking him because he was going to attack you. So preemptive strike, it, it means um, it's a, an attempt to justify making the first attack, I suppose. You're saying that he was going to attack anyway. Okay, um, two more expressions to be under siege. A siege is the type of attack when an army surrounds a town or city 
and um, very often they cut off supplies to the city so there could be starvation in the city because there's no food coming in and there could be all sorts of other problems like looting and rioting looting is when there's no law and order and a lot of people are stealing things from each other and rioting is similar it's usually when they're setting fire to shops and stealing things from the shops and there's no law and order um, so a city could be under siege for one month six months three years um, you can also lay siege to a city which is the opposite you can say that uh, the army are laying siege to Madrid I'm, I'm just giving that as an example but um, I'm, I'm sure they're not and I'm sure they won't be but um, to lay siege to it's always plus city so if you read classical uh, literature and you you perhaps interested in history of Greece or Rome you'll hear about the army laying siege to the city the barbarian city or the um, whatever okay a military coup is when um, one particular group of people seize power basically um, when it's military coup it sounds like it's somebody connected to the military and they use the army to seize power from from the government or from whoever's in power at the time and so it's a type of uprising it's a type of rebellion and it's when power changes in the state it goes from one group to another group um, and it's involving the military obviously so there could be a civil war when there's a military coup there could be a war in one state between two different powers two different sides that's what we call a civil war it's not like a, an international conflict it's a war in one particular state um, now some army terms I suppose or some military terms to ambush it means to wait to set up a trap for the enemy um, and to wait for them to walk into their trap where they will be slaughtered and you can also say to be caught in an ambush because it's a noun and a verb okay to shell means to use heavy artillery um, shells are the, he the 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 bombs basically which are fired by heavy artillery guns so we're talking really big guns not the kind of guns you carry but the kind of guns which are very very big and you wheel to different places and you could shell frontline positions you could shell their headquarters it's another word um, but yeah you shell the enemy you, it means you fire heavy artillery at the enemy so collateral damage we've done it's a kind of euphemism for slaughtered civilians it's it's people who are killed um, accidentally by the military when they perhaps launch an airstrike or, or when they fire heavy artillery it would still be collateral damage to be caught in a crossfire it's like it sounds it's when you, there is uh, there's um, fire coming from the left and fire coming from the right there's lots of bullets flying from the left and right and so you are caught in the crossfire a position nobody wants to be in I'm sure so loot is when people steal from uh, private property and from shops rioting tends to be in the middle of the city and so it tends to be less private property it seems to me and more shops <laughs> when when there was the uh, hurricane when there was natural disasters very often there's looting afterwards because there's no law and order and it means people are stealing from houses but riots are normally some kind of political demonstration usually or something like that and then um, violence erupts in the middle of the city city and shops are smashed and that kind of thing plunder and pillage are a little bit different because they're usually used for soldiers and when soldiers plunder or pillage somewhere it means that they um, have taken over a new um, area or territory and they are stealing things from the area they're pillaging things they're, they're stealing all sorts of possessions from any of the from the private property around them um, so we use the word declare with war declare war seize power or you could even seize the city you could even capture a city you can say the enemy has captured London or whatever it is um, you can capture enemy troops and remember this word for soldiers it's another good word 
you can defeat the rebels, which means you are victorious. The victory is yours. You beat them. You defeat the rebels. Rebels are obviously a word for the people who are rebelling, the others, the other, um, the people who are resisting very often the government, but um, it, it's a word used as very often the enemy, really, the people you're fighting against. Okay, retreat or withdraw, they're a little bit different actually, I've put them together because they're very similar. When you retreat, it means you pull back, you pull out of wherever you are. It means you, as a soldier, you're going in the other direction, you're not attacking the enemy, you're running away. You're retreating or you're trying to get as much distance as possible. I shouldn't say run away really, but you're, you're coming back from your position. Um, if you withdraw, it's the same thing, but you can also use this word kind of the opposite way, and you can say the ge general withdrew his troops, okay? Uh, you wouldn't say the general retreated his troops, you would say the troops retreated, or the gem general withdrew his troops. Okay, troops can surrender, which means give up, it means they don't want to fight anymore, they wave the white flag. Um, they, you can also invade a foreign power which is when you put your army into another sovereign nation um, after the battle has finished you may decide to evacuate the wounded you may decide to evacuate civilians or you may decide to evacuate refugees evacuate just means pull people out of an area um, but this is not like a retreat or a withdrawal because it's not involving troops re really it could involve troops because they're wounded troops but evacuate just means get people out of one area and put them in another and so during the war a lot of people in London a lot of young kids in London and the areas around London were evacuated and they were civilians they were evacuated they were taken away from the city because there was a bombing campaign on the city um, you can annex a disputed territory very similar to invade this word um, and it it it's slightly different though because annex it sounds like it's a part of land which is right next to your country you can even use this word for when you build something on the side of your house and so it's got a similar meaning to that just take a, um, a disputed territory and claim it as your own um, to stockpile means stock up if you've seen one of my phrasal verb videos I mentioned this word stock up means um, uh, keep collecting and building uh, building up your supply of something and so if you're building up your supply of weapons you're stocking up on weapons you're building up that supply and of, of course um, if somebody's planning on going to war they need to stockpile some weapons first now deploy troops or heavy artillery or helicopters um, it simply means put those troops into battle into action it's kind of the opposite of withdraw withdraw your troops means take them away from action and deploy them means put them into battle um, you can sustain heavy casualties you can suffer from heavy casualties oh, so, sorry suffer heavy casualties um, this means that uh, a lot of your men or your troops um, are wounded in battle they're injured in some kind of way you will probably want to disarm any soldiers who you've captured as soon as possible. <laughs> disarm them, take away their weapons. But maybe there has been a ceasefire for a week. Maybe there's been a truce for a week and you have decided to rearm because you don't think that the truce will hold. So you, this means get, get weapons back again, um, stock up on weapons once more. Um, last one I did was armoured car, um, armour, I just wanted to show that this was similar to the word arm and arm and nuclear arms, arms are obviously a type of weapon and armour is what the knights used to wear in battle and we also use it for when you armour some kind of modern equipment like an armoured tank, an armoured car, it just means protection around the um, piece of equipment okay thanks for uh, watching please ask any questions under the video and I'll try and answer them as soon as possible um, yeah thanks very much and I'll see you all soon